Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and I'm so glad you could join us today right here on Daily Faith. Today, I'm going to be talking to you and explaining to you about the doldrums. You've heard that saying? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is today. And we've got some great news coming from Moldova and our mission work. I can't wait. My daughter Melody is here with me, and we just love you guys. We're so glad you dropped in by today. This is Daily Faith. God bless. I want to talk to you today, and I don't know if Melody knows what this is. Do you know what the doldrums are, Mel? Have you heard of the doldrums? I actually do know what the doldrums are, but really? probably because I'm Philip Cameron's daughter. <laughs> and that's the, the only reason why. <laughs> you, you've heard the saying, you know, you, you'll ask someone, how are, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm down in the doldrums. Well, I learned what the doldrums were a number of years ago, and I'm going to share them with you today. In the world, on the globe of the world, you've got the equator around the middle. Five degrees above that and five degrees below it is a band of still air. Above it, the winds run from the west to the east. Below it, the winds run from the east to the west. So in the days when ships depended on air filling their sails, they would use those natural currents, the trade winds as they were called, to move boats across the ocean. When I fly home to Europe, the winds blow us. Sometimes I've flown in airplanes, and the, and the tailwind behind the airplane has been 150 miles an hour. And it cuts your journey from America to, the, to Europe by an hour. It's a great I always, the first thing I'll do is I'll look on the screen in our, on, the, on the, the back of the seat in front of me, and I'll find out what the tailwinds are. To the same effect, when we're coming for, from Europe to America, and that, that 150 mile wind is blowing against the plane, it cuts the speed of the airplane over the land by 150 miles an hour, making a 10 hour journey as long as 12 hours. I don't know if you know that or not, that's free information from a Scotsman. And when a Scotsman gives you something free, take it. It may never happen again. The doldrums is this band around the equator. And a ship could get caught in the doldrums and the water be like glass, and not a breath of wind in 120 degree weather, and a ship could get stuck in the, in the doldrums, and the crew starve to death because they didn't have the supplies to last long enough to get through the doldrums. The most dangerous part of your Christian walk, the most dangerous part of your life, isn't when the wind is blowing, whether it's blowing with you or against you. If it's blowing against you, you've got to stay true and be active. If it's blowing behind you, well, it's easy days and happy days. But the most deadly part of your life is when the doldrums take place. When nothing is moving in your life. When there's a spiritual malaise all around you. And I want to encourage you, if you're in the doldrums, I'm going to pray with you today that God comes and breathes into your situation. All it takes is one touch of God. My dad, many years ago, he was going to Ireland to preach, and he had to get up at 5 in the morning to drive down to Stranraer, where the ferry would take him across to Ireland. And he didn't get a bed until it was in the wee hours of the morning, so he had hardly slept. And he was sitting in his uh, kitchen in Scotland, and waiting just to, to go, leave, and my mom was making him some breakfast. And as he, was, as he was sitting there, he was in the doldrums. His heart was, he was thinking, Lord, you know, why am I doing this? And, and he, he switched on the radio, and he, he turned the dial, as we did in those old, the old days, and he got on long wave, a, a, a man speaking, preaching, and the only reason my dad knew he was preaching, he was preaching in a foreign language, but every few minutes, you'd hear the man saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And my dad says, the anointing of God came out of that radio and filled his heart with faith 
and got him out of that doldrums he was in and blew him into a, a great stream. He said, I went to Ireland. It was one of the greatest services we've ever had in our lives because God had moved in his doldrum experience. So I want to tell you something, whatever you are today, if you are in the high winds of pushing you forward or if you're in headwinds slowing you down, it's better than being in the doldrums. And I pray for you today that God will stir your heart again and will challenge you to believe God for something bigger than yourself. If the devil can get you to a point of sitting down and get you in the doldrums, you could die there and never again know the breath of God. But in the name of Jesus, I wanted to bring this illustration to you today to let you know that in your doldrum days, God's there too. God lives in the doldrums. And all you're going to do is you're going to ask Him, say, Lord Jesus, breathe on me again. Stir my heart again. Challenge my faith again. Let me believe again. Let me see again. Let me go again. I'm talking to someone just now, and you were once a minister, and you've given up, and you've thought, well, there's no point. The Holy Ghost arranged for you and I to meet today, my friend, to let you know it's not done yet. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose for you. You're in a moment and a season of doldrums, but that's not the end of your life. It's not the end of your experience. God is bigger than the circumstance you're in. And I pray right now, that the breath of God, let it breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on me. Sing it with me. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on. Sing it again one more time. Come on, let's pray together. Make it as a prayer. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe. On me, help me, Lord Jesus. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on. Listen to me. I can feel the Holy Ghost. He's right there beside you. Whenever Jesus shows up, it's for a purpose. He's the greatest conservationist, is that the word, in the world. He only comes for a purpose. And I believe, I can sense the Holy Spirit right now. Stirring your heart to believe again. I'm, I'm talking to someone that's lost your faith. Your heart has been broken and stood on so many times. And you're wondering, can I believe again? Can I stand again? Can I even walk again? Never mind, run. Help me, Jesus, get out of the doldrums I'm in. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. That strength comes from heaven into your heart. That power that you can't create is infused into you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And that the doldrums that you're in will stop. And the flutter of the sails of your life, the snap of that sail when the first breath of wind hits it, that the famine of your life is done, that the silence of uncertainty comes to an end. The peace of God, the strength of heaven comes into your life. In Jesus' name. Let it breathe on me. Come on, sing it. Let the breath of God 
now breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Thank you, Jesus. Let it breathe, Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of God now Amen. Amen. It's not done yet. It's not over. God's got a plan. God's going to stir you out of your doldrums. In the name of Jesus. We'll be back after this. Watch this. Full House. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. It is time for household salvation. You have a family to get saved, and I want to help you get them saved. The greatest promise, the Bible says, Noah, moved with fear, built an ark for the saving of his family. The ark wasn't about the animals. The ark was about his family. And I want to tell you something. The promise of God for you is for you and your whole family to be saved in the ark of safety. This book, Full House, it's time for household salvation. I wrote this originally a number of years ago, and we sold 300,000 copies of that one book. And this is an updated edition of it, and you need to have it in your home. You can call our address, uh, call the number on your screen, 1-833-DAILY-FAITH, or 324-5932. Or you can write us at PO Box 42246, sorry, 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, Three six one two four, and get this book today. And if you've unsaved loved ones that you'd like me to pray for, in my office we have an ark, a miniature ark, that an uncle of my my wife Chrissy's made for me, handmade it. And in the side there's a door that goes down, and we literally I hold your family's names in my hand and pray for them, and I put them into the ark. And by doing so, it's a symbolic gesture that they are in the ark of safety and we're believing God with you. So contact me today. I want you to meet a tremendous young girl. Her name is Ulizana. She's been with me so many years traveling and preaching and testifying and uh, I want you to get to know her a bit better. Watch this. A life defined by institutions. Ten years in a tuberculosis hospital and six more in an orphanage. A forgotten name, no place to call home, no family, no love, nothing but loneliness and pain. A life defined by God. My pain turned into purpose, a purpose that takes me back to the lifeless building where a decade of my life was spent in hopelessness. Today, the same hallways I once walked are still walked by broken souls. What I once thought was a mess, today is a message. A message of redemption, hope, and ultimate forgiveness shared with those that today are what I once was. An ex exceptional, uh, outstanding girl called Ulizana. Her mom went, her mother went to Russia to study from Moldova, a wealthy family. <clears throat> Met a man there from a, ta a, a country called Kyrgyzstan, beside Pakistan. Went there with him, had three daughters, and he began to beat her and abuse her. 
she was pregnant with Ulizana, ran for our life back to Moldova to utter complete poverty. She put the three daughters in an orphanage, and when Ulizana was born, she put her in a tuberculosis hospital because there was nowhere else that she could go, a newborn baby. And Ulizana spent 10 years in that tuberculosis hospital, not sick, abandoned. No visitors, no Christmas, no birthdays, had never seen inside a house, had never known anything about a family. One day a woman showed up and she says, I'm your mother, a European woman. Her father is Asian. And the woman says, I'm your mother, and, and you've got three other sisters. Would you like to meet them? And she, it was the dream of her life to have a family. So she took them. She took Ulizana to this orphanage and dropped her off. So she spent 10 years, the first 10 years of her life in a tuberculosis hospital, and the, the next six years of her life in an orphanage. When she got to the orphanage, the teacher said, what's your name? And she says, my name is Christina. And the teacher says, no, your paperwork tells me your name is Ulizana. So she had had the wrong name all her life. And from that day, she was known as Ulizana. So she lost the name she knew. When she finally got to meet her sisters, they told her, your mother, our mom is mentally unstable. And she's at risk to you. So if you see her coming, you must run away. She lost her mom and found her mom in one day. Found her mother and lost her mother in a day. And because she was younger than her sisters, the kind people in the orphanage kept the sisters in one part of the orphanage and kept her on another. She came to meet us at 16 years of age, having never been inside a house, never watched her mom cook a meal, never had a birthday, never had a Christmas. Had been told because she was Asian in her appearance that she was ugly by everybody in the hospital and the orphanage. Angry. Oh my goodness, she was so angry. She fought with me for hours, telling me I will never be part of a family. I will never call anyone father. No one will be my dad. And, and, and after a couple of hours, I said, there's nothing I can help you with. I don't think there's anything I can do. And she began to cry. And she says, I have nowhere else to go. And she is a giant. Her insight into God. She wants to preach the gospel. Unwanted by everybody else. A wonderful girl. A miracle. Called Ulizana. And if someone like you. Hadn't given. And hadn't made a bed available. I had nowhere to take her but the street. And because someone gave, we had a home that she could come to and have her whole heart transformed. And now she's a tigress for the kingdom of God. I mean fearless. She is the head praise and worship leader in the church in Moldova. Is that right, Mel? She's fierce. Yeah. She's incredible. She's an amazing girl and, and made possible yeah. by someone just like you, her life. You see, th this, is not, this is not just giving a bowl of rice. This is changing, fundamentally changing the root system of a, f of a person, changing their heart completely, turning them from an orphan like this, this lovely little girl was into a daughter she calls me dad she doesn't know what missing someone means she's no idea of she's no emotion of missing someone so i'll write down say you're missing me she'll say i feel an absence of you in my life but she'll never say i miss you and the other day she, she was on the phone and she says i miss you dad and i says what you actually miss me and uh, she is just she's an amazing girl made her life made possible 
because someone like you gave. We have a tremendous opportunity right now in Moldova. We have bought a village of houses and we've managed to pay them off and we're now furnishing them. And finish, there's two still to be finished. It takes $45,000 to finish a house. When we bought them, they were unfinished. All the, all the plumbing needs to be done, the wiring needs to be done. The, the structure is built, but everything else needs to be finished. And we have finished all but two of them. And it's going to take $45,000. You may be watching just now would like to help us finish one of these houses. Your gift would make not every household nine kids. No, every household 16 kids. I'm sorry. You can help us change lives like Ulazana. And I think about that story you told about granddad. He was in a house in Scotland and somebody in another part of the world, probably yeah. Scandinavia or... Scandinavia. Yeah. Denmark, he thinks. Pulled him out of the, his doldrums. And we have that. God uses us to pull others out of their doldrums. And these kids talk about a life of... Their whole life is, yeah. has been I mean, you, the doldrums. Every day the same. Yeah. Every day in an orphanage is the same. Mm -hmm. You get up at six, you go to the bathroom, you go breakfast, you clean your room, you go to studies, you finish. I mean, they are regimented like, like a camp every day. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. The temperature outside changes, which makes the place inside more and more miserable as the cold weather comes, which can be as, as low as 30 degrees below zero. I was in one orphanage one time where 16 kids had frozen to death by the 11th of December. Frozen to death. And in this misery of doldrums, decades, this girl spent 16 years in, in the doldrums. But I'll tell you what, she is making up time for it now. We would like you to help us. We are building right now these homes, and we're in the process of furnishing them. And Melody, tell us how we can help Orphan's Hands furnish these houses. Well, what we've done, we've done the work of choosing all the things, because um, it's, it's, a, it's a job to get that much stuff for that many houses. Color coordinate everything. Yes, or? of course, yeah, we want to set it up like we would if it was our own home. Um, so we've gone through um, Walmart and Target and um, chosen the bedding and the sheets and all the things needed to put the house together. And we've done it that way so that you guys can either physically drive down to the store and hold in your hand the bedding that's gonna be on a bed on the other side of the world and the girl can lay there at night and know she's She's yeah. safe and she has a purpose. Um, so you can go in to the store and buy. You can go online and buy. You can go to the register. We have it on the philipdcameron.com so website. Someone, if so if someone's with philipdcameron.com, there's a, there's a link on that philipdcameron.com. Yes, that will take you to the stores. Um, and all the items come up on the screen, correct? Right. You can see everything that we've chosen. And if it's been chosen? And we'll, actually, we'll be continuing to add things as we go along as well. Um, on top of that, we also have... Um, toiletries and other necessary things for the girls as they come in because um, we need to have all those kind of things stocked in the bathrooms and bedrooms and kitchens and all that kind of stuff too but um, yeah that way you can do it online you can go into the store and buy it and then you can ship it to us that web that our mailing address will also be on the website and so. also if, if you want to do by if you're like me I'd rather just go to the website look on the pictures and, and click what I want to do and then and Certainly check out easier. And then what happens is at the office, the UPS truck and the FedEx truck pulls up and your gift is given and it's put on pallets and then put on a container and in a month it's in Moldova. You can make a tremendous difference today by providing the bedding and the, all the house stuff needed for a house. And we've got six houses to fill. So there's plenty of areas you can help us. And also the most important thing you can do for us today the lifeblood of our ministry is people giving one dollar a day. A dollar a day won't change your world financially. But I'll tell you what, a dollar a day changed Ulazana's world. That gift, someone giving a dollar a day. Every house that we have requires 120 people giving a dollar a day to pay for it, to sponsor it. That pays the electricity and the gas and the food and the house parents and all the kids getting clothes and bus tickets and teeth getting fixed and doctor's bills. All of that is taken care of by 120 people 
giving one dollar a day. I think Ulusana is worth saving for a dollar a day. And there are hundreds of Ulusanas, hundreds of them, waiting for us to go and help them. We can only go as far as you'll allow our hands and arms and hearts to reach. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, watching me, there are people who have been touched today by this program, whose life has been turned around, that they're moving out of the doldrums into a new phase of life in the, in, 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 in the Spirit. And I pray, Lord Jesus, right now that you will speak to their hearts to respond, to help those in need. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they championed the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124 So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.